morning and welcome to our service here at Brisbane Baptist Church. This morning, John Crabe is going to be teaching and it's the second in the series on the cross, focusing today on the topic of the cross brings forgiveness. Also during our service, we'll have some times of worship and prayer, but uh, also a time of communion this week. And within the service, we'll also have a little introduction to the Holiday Club, which is kicking off this week. And we'll meet a couple of characters that you're going to be seeing if you're around at that from Monday to Friday. But before we do any of that, let's kick off with a time of worship. Give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken, and great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise We pour out our praise It's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise to you Only you Give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken, and great are you. It's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise We pour out our praise It's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise to you only It's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, only you. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you. Shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you, only it's 
your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise We pour out our praise It's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise to you Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. We're now going to stop and take some time within our service to pray to God about various situations, both locally and more globally. And I don't know about you, but I often find myself just with my head full of different thoughts of, of things that I need to do. And I can find it, I have to be quite intentional to take time to stop and be still. And, you know, even on, on Friday evening, as I'm sitting recording this prayer for, for Sunday morning, I've got things running around in my head that I need to do. We've got um, friends coming around for dinner in a little while, which is lovely to be able to do that again, but also means that my head is full of, you know, I'm helping to get things ready. And I promised Jill that I would uh, hoover the living room before folks came around and I haven't done that yet. And just all these different thoughts and things that can be in our minds. And so it's important to, to take time to, to be intentional, to stop, to slow down, and to focus a few minutes on God within the busyness of our lives. And so Holy Spirit, we pray that you would come and meet with us in these moments of silence. Lord, we pray that as we come to you in prayer, bringing our requests, the things that are on our hearts to you, Lord, that you would come and meet with us and minister to us this morning, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, dwelling within each one of us, you would help us just to stop, to, to slow our racing and wandering minds and to focus on you for a few moments in the stillness and the quiet. In Philippians chapter four, Paul writes, don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So not to worry about anything, but to pray about everything. And so in the next few moments, we're going to pray about various different situations and I'll leave a, a couple of little moments of silence as well for you to bring your own prayers and situations that are in your hearts before God this morning. So let's pray together. Lord God we do want to begin by thanking you for all of the good things that we have within our lives. Lord we thank you that where we live within our world we we really are in a, in a very safe sort of situation most of the time. Lord, we thank you that even when there are difficulties and troubles within our worlds, most of the time, it doesn't directly affect us in the way that it does for so many people within the world. Lord, we thank you for all the ways that you have blessed us with our, our homes, our church community, our family and friends around us. Lord, with the beautiful scenery that we have in Scotland and being able to get out and enjoy that with the good weather that we've had recently. But Lord, we know that for many people within our world, they don't have these, these luxuries, or not even luxuries, but basic needs of, of human life, of shelter and safety. Lord, we know that there are so many people who are having their lives disrupted by war, by famine, by climate change, 
and of course at the moment by the COVID pandemic. And Lord, we want to lift to you this morning all of those who are suffering and struggling within our world. Lord, we think of the news reports that we saw this week of refugees risking their lives coming across uh, the oceans and, and crossing the, the channel in search of that hope of, of a better life, of safety and security. Because the situations that they're coming from are just too horrendous for us to often imagine. Lord God, it, it must be awful to live in that sort of situation that drives you to take those kind of risks and to have to take those steps just for the safety of your family or your children. And Lord, I pray that as a country, Lord, that we would be a place that that seeks the best interests and the welfare of those who are poor and suffering and vulnerable within our world. Lord, that we wouldn't be a country that is self-serving and looking to close our borders and, and keep what we have for ourselves, but that we would be generous. Lord, that we would be a people who want to use the things that we have to share with others who are in need. Lord, that when we see people coming over to our country who are in desperate need, Lord, that we wouldn't vilify or, or try to set up ways of, of stopping people coming, but that we would, Lord, that we would have compassion, that we would have your heart for the poor and the suffering of our world. And God, with the, the coronavirus pandemic still going on so much within the world, again, we've come to a, a better place at the moment, although we're still being cautious within our country. Lord, we thank you for the progress of the vaccines. We thank you for the wonderful workers in, in the NHS and all that they do to, to help and to serve us. But again, Lord, we're reminded of all of the places within our world where the virus is still very much on the rise. We're hearing just today of um, really worrying kind of surges and rises in Japan and a new state of emergency there and fresh lockdowns in Australia in the past week. And so, Lord, we know that this virus is not at an end. We know that there are still so many who are suffering. And again, we know that it is so often those who are living in, in the poorest countries, who are the most vulnerable, who end up suffering the most. So, God, I pray once again that you would help us to be generous as a country. That all of the, the richer countries within the world would honour those pledges that they've made to ensure that vaccines are being given out to those who need them most, to the poor and the vulnerable and the marginalised, to those who are suffering within our world. Lord, I pray that we would go even beyond what we have pledged so far, doing everything that is in our power to protect those who are in need. Lord, in the following moments of silence, we offer up situations from around our world that you have placed onto our own hearts this morning. Lord, we also want to pray for our more local um, issues, issues within our own country and our own local community. Lord, we thank you for all that you have blessed us with once again. And Lord, we pray for our leaders, for the folks who are having to make difficult decisions at this time about easing restrictions and, and how to do that sensibly and protect jobs and the economy, but also protect people's lives and health and Lord it is such a tough balance and there is so much pressure on folks in, in leadership positions within our country and so I pray that you would be with them. Lord that you would give them wisdom and that you would give them courage and boldness to do not necessarily what is popular but to do what is right, to do what is just, to seek righteousness and justice first and foremost. Lord within our own communities we thank you that our churches are able to meet together in person once again. Lord, it's such a blessing to be able to come together and to see people and to gather for worship and being able to sing within our services. Lord, we thank you so much for how far we have come in these things. And Lord, we thank you for the great work being done 
throughout this pandemic by organisations like the City Mission and other folks within Glasgow and various charities, working again to protect those who are most vulnerable, who are maybe in, in situations of poverty within our, our own communities. And Lord, I really pray once again that you would help us to, to be seeking ways to reach out and to share your love and to share the blessings that you've given us with those who are less fortunate within our communities. Lord, I pray that you would always help us to have that mentality that when we have been blessed, it's not so we can hold it for ourselves, but to be a blessing to others. And Lord, I thank you for the strides that we have made in issues around things like um, racial justice and raising these kind of issues to the surface and having them talked about so much more and issues around mental health, which has been a big thing being spoken about through this pandemic. But Lord, even in these last few weeks after the, the final of the Euros and the abuse towards the English players and um, their who'd missed penalties, and in the past few days with Simone Biles, the uh, American gymnast, stepping down because of her mental health and receiving a lot of praise, but also a lot of negativity. And today, another um, athlete, the cricketer, Ben Stokes, deciding to take time off for his mental health. And again, receiving a lot of negativity from some folks about that. Lord, we see that we still have so far to go in bringing about equality, in seeking to, to see the, the lines of segregation being torn down, to destigmatize issues around mental health and mental well-being. But Lord, we know that you care for us, that you love us, that you love each and every person made in your image, and that you love us in a holistic manner, that you love us in heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you want us to, to take care of all aspects of ourselves and of each other. Once again, in these moments of silence, we want to lift up any issues from our local um, country and our local communities to you this morning. And finally, Lord, in these next few moments, we want to bring to you the names of any people who you placed on our hearts. Lord, it could be folks from our family or friends or folks from within our church community that we know about who are, are struggling at this present time for whatever reason in whatever ways, Lord, but folks who we want to lift to you in prayer. And so in the next few moments of silence, if God has placed some people on your heart, just lift them up to heaven in prayer this morning. So Lord God, we lift our world, both the local and the global, and we lift the people that you have placed around us in our lives and the relationships that we have with one another. Lord, we lift all of these people and situations to you, trusting that you love us, that you're working for our good. And Lord, praying that you would inspire us to be part of the solution wherever we can be to make your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, folks, if you find this video, it might mean we haven't made it back to you. But fear not, no harm will come to us, for I am Professor John Burns, master animal tracker, man with knowledge of every forest in the world, able to survive on even the most meagre of resources. And this, somewhere back there, is my assistant, Peyton the Monkey. Good day. Keep up, Peyton. Now, we need to find our way to the Bearstown Baptist Holiday Club. We're supposed to be helping them this week. Come on, Peyton. Journey ahead. It's like a jungle down here. It is a jungle, sir. Seems to be some sort of path that we can follow. Right. Oh, watch out for branches, Peyton. Will do, sir. This could be it, Peyton. Ahead. 
daylight. Ah, Peyton. It's some sort of soldier. Maybe he can point us in the right direction. Ah, uh, yes. I'll have a word. Excuse me, sir. Good sir. I was just wondering if you could point us in the direction of Bearsden Baptist Holiday Club. Mm-hmm. Ah. Due north, he says. Due north, you say? But, Peyton, we've been heading south. Let me get my compass. Roman statue. Peyton, did you give me the map the wrong way up? Well, I'm sorry, sir. I assumed that you'd know how to use a map, considering you're an expert on the jungle. Hmm. Due north, that chap said. Should be just around. Here. Peyton, we've done it. We've found our way to the Baptist Church. Oh, yeah. Good ah. on you, sir. Thank you. And it looks like they've set us up with some lodgings. Oh, my reputation precedes me. But since it's Sunday now, and the club doesn't start till Monday morning, well, time to get some kit then. Excellent. Lead the way, sir. Thank you. Hi, Peyton. <laughs> Good night, sir. Sleep well. Peyton. Yes? Would you sing me to sleep? Of course, sir. Thank you. Twink. <laughs> So unexplainable 
unreasonable life I can hardly think as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still into love in all of your ways Perfect in all of your ways You're perfect in all of your ways To us One of the biggest issues we face in terms of our inner life as human beings is the problem of guilt. Things that we feel bad about that we've done wrong in the past and the burden that weighs on our spirits because of that. On a psychology website I came across on the internet, this website gave five top tips for dealing with guilt. Number one was to ask the question, is your guilt appropriate and why? Number two was to make changes instead of wallowing in your guilt. Number three was accepting that you did something wrong, but then move on. Number four, learn from your mistakes. Number five, recognize that no one is perfect. And I would have said all these tips are helpful to some degree. And the last one is clearly true. I spoke about this last week, Paul's words from Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We're all sinners. None of us is perfect. Also regarding number four, that we all need to learn from our mistakes. I think that's true. The question is, what do we need to learn? Number three was accepting that you did something wrong, but then move on. To me, described confession, but without repentance. However, the repentance can be seen in number two, which is to make changes, because repentance means literally a change of mind. But not just in any direction. The change of mind that the Bible requires of us, encourages us towards, is to change our mind in a Godward direction. Number one is is quite a helpful tip too. Is this guilt appropriate and why? I remember a sermon by R.T. Kendall, the American preacher, who compared true guilt with false guilt. True guilt, he explained, arises when we do something contrary to God's law, what we would call sin. And there's no doubt that we do need to deal with that. 
In contrast, false guilt, he explains, arises when we fail to meet some unreasonable expectation we or someone else has laid on us. And we feel bad when we fail to meet that expectation. And it can happen in churches. People applying their expectations about us attending, serving, giving, praying, and we feel guilty when we fall short. We should endeavor to recognize false guilt, forgive those responsible for imposing it on us, and move on. Because false guilt really shouldn't be something we carry as a burden on our shoulders. True guilt, however, is what we really need to consider in the exchange that we're thinking about on the cross today. And that exchange is this. Jesus was punished that we might be forgiven. And the reason that we need to address true guilt is because of its cause, which is sin. And sin, as I explained last week, is humanity's biggest problem and has nasty consequences, the most significant of which Paul describes in Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so the big consequence of sin is death, but there are typically other consequences that uh, impact us in this life also. And that key verse also hints at the solution in these words, this short phrase, in Christ Jesus our Lord. What does that mean? Well, in Matthew 26, 28, in Matthew's version of the Last Supper, Jesus is speaking about the cup of wine and explains its significance in these terms. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Similarly, in Ephesians 1, 7, Paul writes, In Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of his, of God's grace. So we see that our our sin and the guilt And the consequences it generates are dealt with completely by the blood of Jesus shed on the cross. Jesus didn't die for his own sins, for he lived the perfect sinless life. But rather, as the exchange states, Jesus was punished that we might be forgiven. And that benefit is highlighted in these verses too because it is because we're forgiven that we can enjoy the gift of God which is eternal life. None of us deserves that outcome. We deserve to feel guilty. We deserve to be punished. We deserve to face death. So it's only by God's grace that this exchange can occur. Made available on the cross. Hallelujah. We access this grace through repentance and faith in Jesus. So simple, but most people don't get it. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Now I want to explore that amazing truth further using a short story that appears in Zechariah 3 verses 1 to 4, that Old Testament book that we all dip into on a regular basis. These verses. The man showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right side to accuse him. The Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Is not this man a burning stick snatched from the fire? Now Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. And the angel said to those who were standing before him, 
take off his filthy clothes. Then he said to Joshua, See, I have taken away your sin, and I will put fine garments on you. Satan loves to accuse God's people of sin. And he will slander us, that is, accuse us of things that we're not guilty of, what I referred to earlier as false guilt. But he'll accuse us also of things that we are guilty of. And it seems like the high priest Joshua in this little story was guilty of sin pictured by his filthy garments. And that would be true of us too. It's as though we're wearing filthy garments. Yet God rebukes Satan and describes Joshua in these amazing terms. Is not this man a burning stick snatched from the fire? By grace, he removes Joshua's sin, pictured by giving him new garments to wear, fine garments. And surely that we as believers are also like burning sticks snatched from the fire, our sins forgiven and with new garments to wear. And these are special garments, according to Paul. In Galatians 3.27, he says, All of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Periodically, John Perkins uh, in our church will set up a bonfire in the church garden and the children will roast marshmallows on sticks in the embers. You have to be careful you don't leave your marshmallows in for too long or they burn. And sometimes, if you're not careful, you have to snatch them out quickly and you risk burning your hands or getting your hands dirty. Well, that's the way it was for Jesus. When he snatches us, these burning sticks from the fire, he got his hands dirty and burned. Actually, much worse than that. Uh, his hands and feet were pierced by large nails as he was uh, placed on the cross to take our punishment or to mention that exchange once again. Jesus was punished that we might be forgiven. I mentioned earlier that there are benefits that come from this exchange in life and ultimately in eternal life. One of the greatest benefits in life when our sins are forgiven and our guilt is taken away or washed away is peace. Romans 5 verse 1 reads, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And again in Colossians 1.19, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in his Son and through him to reconcile to himself all things by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. If you're not a believer yet, then today you can come to the cross by faith and receive the gifts God has for you grace and life and peace. If you're already a believer, but have still been struggling with some sin and guilt in your life, you just need to return to the cross and you'll find your gifts lying there at the foot of the cross, waiting for you where you left them. True guilt can be a paralyzing force in our lives. And it's one of Satan's top strategies to paralyze believers through accusation. And maybe at times you still feel like a stick burning in the fire whom Satan is seeking to destroy. But none of us needs to stay there because Jesus shed his blood to redeem us. And so I say once more, Jesus was punished that we might be forgiven. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we 
all have experienced guilt at one point or another in our lives. And we probably all recognize that some of that has been false guilt and some of it true guilt. And we pray that you would help us to discern between these two things. Lord, we recognize that false guilt actually is placed on us, sometimes by ourselves, sometimes by other people, uh, for different reasons. Uh, if it's other people, then often for inappropriate reasons. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to discern that false guilt and to lay it to one side, lay it down. Uh, really, most of the time, it simply needs to be ignored and we need to move on. But false guilt is something that we should take seriously. And, and we pray that your Holy Spirit would identify true guilt uh, so that we can deal with it. Uh, true guilt is when we do break your law, when we continue to sin. And, and that's something we all do because none of us uh, ultimately reach, reaches perfection in this life. So help us, Lord, to discern it. Help us to deal with it, remembering that we deal with it as all sin by going to the cross and receiving your grace and mercy through Jesus' blood shed there because of that exchange that can take place at the cross, Jesus being punished so that we can be forgiven. And we receive that forgiveness and grace once again today. Whatever it is we've done, we admit it to you, we turn from it and receive the wonderful gift of grace and purity and life. And we thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's praise the Lord once again for that wonderful gift that we enjoy through Christ our Lord. In the crushing in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Make me your vessel, make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new soil I now surrender. You are breaking new ground. You are breaking new ground. So make me your vessel.
spring new wine out of me Cause where there is new wine There is new power There is new freedom And the kingdom is here I lay down my old flames To carry your new fire today Make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me Jesus bring new wine out of me So now we come to gather around the table and to share in communion together. Let's pray. God of all those who are scattered and broken, you call us to wholeness. We thank you for your love, demonstrated in the giving of your Son, that we might be united with you. We thank you that in Christ you enter into the pain, uncertainty and fear of our world, and that your arms are open in loving embrace, gathering us to you as a shepherd gathers their flock. We thank you for bread and for wine, symbols and signs for us today of your faithfulness to your people through all generations. Amen. I'd like to share a reading from uh, Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in very nature God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking on the very nature of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Just before we share in the elements of bread and wine, we're going to say a little, um, a kind of call and response style liturgy. So I'll read the lines that are in plain text and we can say the lines in bold together. We are the people of God. We are the body of Christ. We are scattered and the body of Christ is broken. But as we gather, the body of Christ is remembered. So together we gather in obedience to Christ's command to remember and to share together in breaking bread and drinking wine in remembrance of the death of Christ. Each piece of bread that we eat was once scattered across the fields and the grain that God gave to grow has become for us the bread of life. 
Each sip of wine we drink was once many vines. And the grapes that God gave to grow have become for us the new wine of God's kingdom. In our communion with one another, we are fed with the bread of heaven that sustains us. And we drink the wine of gladness that brings us joy. On the night on which Jesus was betrayed, he was sitting at supper with his disciples. While they were eating, he took a piece of bread and he broke it, saying that this bread was his body, which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let's share in the bread together. Later on in the meal, he took a cup of wine and said, This cup is God's new covenant, sealed with my blood. Drink from it, all of you, to remember me. Let's drink the wine together. And so, following Jesus' example and command, we eat and drink this bread and this wine, ordinary things of this world, which Jesus Christ makes special. And we trust that Christ also takes us and lifts us from our broken and ordinary state and clothes us with his righteousness. Amen. Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim, hallelujah, what a sin. Scoffing in my place, condemned he stood, sealed my pardon with his blood. Hallelujah, what a Bye. 
Well, thank you all for joining us for our service here at BBC this morning. Starting tomorrow, we've got our holiday club through the next week, and it'll be good to see you guys there. Yeah, and with the holiday club going on, we don't have the normal Bumps and Bundles barista happening tomorrow, but there is cafe chat happening, uh, sort of takeaway tea and coffee from half 11 to one each day. So a bit of a chance for parents who are coming to pick up um, kids from the holiday club or other folks just to pop down, grab a drink and see what's going on. And the regular barista slots are still on on Wednesday and Thursday from 2 till 4. And if any of you, you would like prayer, you can just get in contact with John Crave and he'll organise that for you. Brilliant. Well, thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you through the week or next Sunday. Bye for now. <laughs>